Hey guys, a quick programming note before today's episode. Very exciting. Over the next few weeks, we will be inviting our first guests on the show to share their favorite movies for us to joke about and love on and decide if they are, in fact, guilty pleasures. Uh, we've got Lord DIY, Shane Madej, L. Mills, Ian Hecox, Jarvis Johnson, and more. And for those who want to watch along, we're going to try and start announcing next week's movies at the end of episodes when we can. We're also going to try and announce a month slate on our socials as well as at the end of this episode, so stick around for that. But we are also still testing things. Things. This is all a work in progress. So do we want to mix new releases into our episodes? Today's episode is just that. It was recorded at the top of the year right after Wonder Woman 1984 came out. So we are open to feedback. Do you want some more episodes like this, more or less? We are still learning and we value your feedback. And yes, if we do another TV show like Bridgerton, we will watch every single episode. Enjoy today's incredibly funny episode. It's really a blast. Whether you've seen the movie or not, again, this show is a friend to all. Uh, I think you're going to love it. And we will see you next week for Pitch Perfect with Lore DIY. Enjoy. Ramble. Hello and welcome to Guilty Pleasures, the show that loves what it loves. Each week we talk about one of our favorite Guilty Pleasures movies or shows. But we're also, we're people in the zeitgeist. So we're going to talk about big releases from time to time. And what better way to be in the zeitgeist than to talk about a movie that came out two months ago. Uh, I'm Zach Kornfeld. Joining me as always, Kelsey, Dara, and Garrick Bernard. What's up, guys? That was the lowest energy of an intro I've ever heard from you, Zachary. Are do you, you want to okay? do it again? Are you high again? Did you blow your load? Oh, no, are you high? <laughs> I'm not high. I swear, guys, I'm not high. I did think about it, but I didn't. I'm not. I think I think this movie just zapped all of the energy from me. I, I made a wish and How I've I've it? suffered the consequences. This ener- this movie had nothing but energy and dy- dynamo. I think of the word dynamo when I think of this movie. Ba, 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 dynamo. Me, I can do you want me to do you want, I can do it more high energy. Do you want me to do it again? I would like I would like you to do it with the energy that uh Gal Gadot has. <laughs> Um, okay. In this movie. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Guilty Pleasures. <laughs> no, that was the wrong <laughs> no, 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 no. Not like that. That's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to do it. I, I tried to do her accent and I kind of sounded like an African drug lord. <laughs> yeah, you tried, but we'll let it we'll 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 allow it uh today we're talking about wonder woman 1984 if you did not watch the movie do not fret we got you covered wonder woman 1984 (laughs) follows gal gadot's princess diana in the 80s as she fights the greedy businessman slash tv personality max lord and her nerdy best friend turned crazed villain barbara Minerva, aka cheetah uh max lord gets his hand on the magical dreamstone yes that's the real name uh which you guessed it grants him the powers of unlimited wishes he turns himself into the dreamstone diana coincidentally happens to work at the smithsonian she wishes to get her 1940s lover steve trevor back Kristen wig turns into a cat and for some reason <laughs> diana sort of loses her powers but then not really then she learns how to fly and lasso lightning i renounce my wish guys what a movie what a time what did you think See, now that was the energy I was looking yeah. for, Zachary. Yeah, I wanted energy. to be chill, Zach, today, but no, I, I, you had a wish and I'll grant it. Chill, Zachary. Never heard of her. Never <laughs> met her. Um, I will say when you first started off this log line, I thought you said Princess Diana, and I know that is what you said, but isn't that I what immediately she is? went to <laughs> Princess Diana, like our queen. That would be a very different movie. She is, her official title is Princess Diana of Themyscira. I, Garrick, you Themyscira. know stuff. Themyscira. Yeah. The mascara? Um, Themyscira, yeah, that is the, the Amazonian oh, home. wait, hold on. Hard pause. <laughs> they named the land of the strong, badass, all lady bitches the mascara i've never made that oh connection. shit i never thought I'm about very that. <laughs> wait wait i have to the truth the light the no, independence no, no. is that how the it's mascara? pronounced i thought it was like semi themisiria themiscara themis themis the oh, mascara there's no other way to put it <laughs> uh oh I, my god that's so fucked up that, you know, that okay, someone was the, behind the scenes laughing. Wonder Woman 1, the first one, is 
like mm. a great oh. groundbreaking dope inspiring movie and this one somehow takes everything that worked about it and threw it away i disagree this movie was so good that it was bad this movie was so you good. liked it oh i'm thrilled. i loved it, it oh my god that's my that's my stance that it was so good that it was bad so wait so good it was bad <laughs> it was so good there was like this was like three movies uh-huh. combined there was heavy hitters all around there was romance there was drama there was fight scenes but just not too many fight scenes and gal gadot gadot as lead it was so stacked so good patty jenkins coming off a high okay (laughs) was it like four years too late yes but it was so good that they made it bad it was too good Pedro Pascal? Oh, I, oh, oh you're talking you're talking about like the lineup of not the actual film. No, but the you're film talking about the too. lineup. The I think she liked too. it, Garrick, and I'm thrilled. We I love that you loved 80s it. I thought, comedy, okay. the fashion. Here's the thing. Garrick and I watched it and made you watch it, and I was afraid you were going to be <laughs> mad at us. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm always mad at you guys. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Garrick, what about you? What do you think? I feel like you have um, a hot take, you fucking nerd. Oh yeah, no, no, I hated it. <laughs> no, I okay, so I didn't. <laughs> I, uh, I hated it to my core, um, and <sighs> that is putting it nicely, but. I also want to work again, so I won't like be too harsh on it. It's I don't. Rick is the only one who has something to actually lose in this. Like, on a <laughs> Not at all. Are you fucking kidding me? As they're like a professional bl- writer. No, they're gonna blackball all of us after Fair. this comes out. Fair. Um, but I don't. It was just weird. It, it, the Wishstone stuff n- never worked, and they uh-huh. knew that it didn't work. And if it came, if it stemmed from a comic book story or, or, or something like that, that I, I mean, I haven't read um, a lot of like DC stuff, but if it came from a comic, they should have thrown this out. Like, this <laughs> doesn't make sense. This is like <laughs> 80s level, like cocaine writing, where it's just like, what if there was a stone? Yes! Fucking, oh, and it, it granted all your wishes. And then it, it, it said, be careful what you wish for at the end of it. And it's just like, nobody gives a fuck, dog. Like, we just want to see her fight. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see her bend backward in slow motion in that fucking corset. Am I right, ladies? Yeah. <laughs> oh, CrossFit, the best fucking ad for CrossFit I've ever seen in my life. You know what? I Going off of like, Rick, your whole thing about like the, I don't know, what what is it called? It's like the foil or some shit. Like wh- what's it, what's the device I that that's called? called? The, the stone, the citrine. Stone. The wishing so stone. This, this is citrine. I have this. This is a witchy sh- crystal that like a lot yeah. of bitches have. And it's supposed to be for uh, like abundance and success and hard work. But it's not fucking Aladdin. You don't become the genie. I don't know what this wishing thing was. But what I did like, and here's where you're wrong, Rick, is they okay. took a chance. <laughs> they took a risk on mm-hmm involving every single person on earth in okay. this story plot and yeah. i think when you've got how many people are in the world i don't know at 80 least, billion? At that's least a, a million that's a guess <laughs> at least a million yeah um they probably did a, more, way more. 80, eight, at least a million cast <laughs> i think they i think they nailed it audacious well, let's just dive right into this movie, yeah. guys. Like, let's let's go for it. It it begins before we land in 1984. It begins on the mascara, uh, a beautiful land of warrior princesses, for uh, a what feels like a 45 minute opening chase scene. They're they're playing on uh, ABC's Wipeout course. Uh, (laughs) you mean the like craziest ad for a tampon commercial ever (laughs) that shit was crazy (laughs) at the end it's just like maxi pads when you're on the go (laughs) when you live in the mascara wonder woman wonder wings and then a pad like flies out of their diaper gold diaper yeah that 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 scene was my favorite scene it was your favorite scene. I don't know what... Okay, the, the movie 
very clearly wanted to say something thematic with that scene. And it was about, mm-hmm. like, don't cheat Diana. So there's a little girl, she's running around, she falls off her horse, and then she figures out how to get back in the race. And instead of winning, her mom's like, no, don't cheat. But, like, I'm watching this thing, and she didn't cheat. She fell off her horse, and she was resourceful as fuck. And yeah. I, it just it didn't click and for me. And barebacked back onto the horse, which would absolutely Incredible. pop your cherry yeah. that move 100 <laughs> percent tore baby diana hyman straight front and back there's yeah. i watched that and i went oh for the oh. first time i understood what it was like to get kicked in the balls in the movie with all the guys go, oh i was like ah, only like a fucking 12 year old could do that i guess but those bitches were hot and it fit very fit people I could have used a little bit more like body diversity, but like I'll save my hot takes. I think they knew that we were all mad that we didn't get to spend more time on that island in the first movie. And they're like, okay, we'll make you beg to go anywhere else. (laughs) We'll give you 45 minutes of an opening scene and then never take you back. (laughs) Right. But the other thing is that it's 45 minutes. We won't take you back. It also has nothing to do with the rest of the movie. No. <laughs> because <laughs> the themes learned in it, don't cheat, don't, you know, be resourceful, has yeah, full, nothing full to do. Full character arc. <laughs> n- full character arc. Full story. Sure. Let's let's have this be a short or like a DVD extra or something because it... <laughs> There was no reason why that was in the movie. Carrick, it's it's don't cheat your way through life with a citrine crystal. Mm, That's I, the connection. But I thought the theme was be careful what you wish for. When did that? When, when was it not? <clears throat> no, that's Aladdin. That's Aladdin. Right. You, which is also that movie. This no, movie. <laughs> this movie's entire truth and point was that men also can't have it all. <laughs> You can't be a good husband, a good dad, a good businessman, and work full time. No fucking way. No way. <laughs> it leveled us all. Okay. So after uh, um, we leave the island, we land in the 80s. Uh, we were treated with a very delightfully cheesy 80s montage. Another like 20 minutes too long scene in um 80s mall, which... <laughs> yeah. To be honest, if they weren't wearing those high top sketchers, I wouldn't have known it was the 80s because malls have not fucking changed since the 80s. That JC Penney's <laughs> bitch, they walk straight there. to like <laughs> it's always at the ends. It's always it's, at the ends. And it looks exactly the same. Like they have yeah. not rebranded. Like yeah. the pandemic is probably the death of JC Penney, so let's be honest. 100%. But again, R-I-C. another fight Where? scene where we're just watching her kick ass. For right. no other reason than fucking fight porn, right? Yeah, I think that's it. Where they're just like, remember Wonder Woman? Remember how much she k- kicked ass? Well, she's back. She's back, baby, in the <laughs> 80s. Let's go. It's go- It's game time. And then also, who the fuck robs anything in a, a mall? mall? There's like, so many you. witnesses. <laughs> Don't rob a mall. What are you, are you going to hold <laughs> everyone in the mall hostage? No, they're going to beat the shit out of you. Yeah. Why? And then his approach to hold a hostage was to... Dangle a child there. over a ledge. Oh, that right. guy went full zero to 100. He was like, right. I'm not going back. And I was, I like paused it and I looked at Jared and I was like, there's something deeper there. Right. There's a different <laughs> movie with that guy who's, who's right. so taunted by the, the private prison system in the eighties as a white dude that he doesn't want to go back. Right. There's, I mean, what were they doing to, to actual Oh, to be so, to be fair, also to to just preface that like Jared is the sweetest, nicest guy I've ever met in my life. And when I told him we had to do Wonder Woman eighty four, he was like, "Oh, I'm sure it's not that bad. Like, uh, I'll find something to like about it." And the first thing he says when we turn it on is he looks at me and he goes, oh, "It's two hours and thirty three minutes," <laughs> and I go. Uh, <laughs> What it is? <laughs> it fucking is. It's, that was his first word. <laughs> that is exactly how I felt three times in the movie. Yep. Because I I was watching I was watching it and I was just like, okay, this will probably be over in a second. Two hours and thirty minutes. Ugh. I get to the midway point. I'm like, Ugh. all right, this it's probably we're probably climax, over. Right? Two yeah. hours and thirty. I felt two hours and 30 minutes. Usually oh. when you're when you feel it or usually when two hours and 30 minutes go past, you're just like, oh, 
I guess, you know, a, a good chunk of the day is gone. I guess I need to go to sleep soon or so on and so forth. I felt every minute of oh. that two hours and 30 minutes while watching this movie. In the worst way. It makes way. 2001 A Space way. Odyssey feel zippy and fast paced. Right. <laughs> yes. You know, I'm seeing why I liked it and you guys didn't. I watched this over two days time. Oh, that's, you're so okay. you're so smart. Oh, you're well, so that's smart. Not fair. Game this you like a TV changer. <laughs> that is I, I did fall asleep the, the first yeah, time. You fell asleep. Yeah, okay, I fell asleep. So. A, the yeah. mark of a phenomenal film. I got so, eight hours of beautiful rest in between parts. Yeah. It was like Hamilton. They broke it up into two with no intermission, but I took my intermission. God damn it. Let's talk about Diana, right? Because for, for a movie that's two hours and 30 minutes, and, and as we have stated, has a criminally long first act. I, like the first act of this movie yeah. has got to be 50 <laughs> minutes at least. You would think yeah. we know so much about the intricate, complex character of Princess Diana of the Mascara. I really don't know anything about her in the beginning of the movie, except that she's lonely no. and every man in the world hopelessly wants to fuck her. Every yes. single mm -hmm. person she comes into contact mm -hmm. with is desperate to get with her. Okay, that is because every <laughs> human in the, our world desperately oh, wants to fuck her. Oh, that's <laughs> right. In in okay, so my my thing about this movie um and why it is technically a good film oh. is because watching Gal Gadot in motion uh. Is all you need for a good movie, <laughs> and, and 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 I don't. I and this might make me seem terrible or like a bad. Or, she is stunningly attractive. Yeah. In, 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 a, in a in a sense where I literally wasn't like I wasn't paying attention to the plot. I I still felt that two hours and thirty minutes, <laughs> but I was not paying attention to most of the things going on. Not because it, it didn't make sense, but because I kept staring at her. And Damn. the first thing I did, the first thing I Googled after watching the movie wasn't like, oh, um, <laughs> how did this get porn. made or oh. something like that. It was Gal Gadot husband. Like, oh, <laughs> like, you know, question, question mark. mark. Question mark. You know, because I wanted to see who who is this this Greek god that mm. that you know found her, and it's some schlubby dude, and I'm like, no, no this what? is bullshit. Nothing matters. He's, okay, he's well, we're all gonna handsome. Google that right now. Gal <laughs> Gadot. Like, but I could take him. I could probably take right, him. but I could, you know. But don't doesn't they, that make you love her more? Yes, yes, it does. Yes, it does. Mm. It, it makes you love her on a, on a level that I, I didn't think possible. <laughs> he's like okay. handsome in a silver fox kind of way. In yeah, an older dad way, which actually yeah, kind right. of ties into the theme of this entire movie of like, everything in this could have been fixed if it wasn't just another man with daddy issues. Like, yes. It doesn't reveal itself to the end, but I, I'll wait till we get there where it like spoils it in like some sort of flashback projected montage that like may or not may or may not have been projected onto a Times Square screen. But like this villain, <laughs> uh, Pedro Pascal or, did, you know, what? I'm not even going to say villain. I'm going to say like uh, villain adjacent uh, Super, uh, vil movie villain MVP <laughs> red villain herring. Adjacent. Thank never, God he, um, he wasn't anything. the villain. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This all could have been solved if he just had a good dad, guys. We got to break the chain. We got to break yeah. the cycle. And we won't have to yeah. have, as Rick thinks, bad movies. <laughs> 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 if we had better dads, that's all I'm saying. Wonder Woman in this is, I'm sure we're going to talk a lot about her powers, her seemingly limitless powers, but it's... I feel like this movie tried to simultaneously make her Spider-Man, Iron Man, Superman, the entire <laughs> yes. cast of Guardians of the Galaxy, and didn't yes. and 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 succeeded in none of those things. Like she's not because I I think this is <clears throat> what happens when you don't know um, the character, and I think like you don't know like the source material, and so Ooh. you just kind of like just pluck things. And I don't know if this might. I don't. I, I doubt that this is a Patty Jenkins problem, but this might be like a DC as a whole issue, where they don't really like understand where these characters are like coming from. Which is why I think this time this sequel had to really have the heavy hitters in the cast yeah. with them. Yeah. Well, let's to get into them. I didn't know that Kristen Wiig was in this. I had no idea. 
Clearly, oh, yeah. I didn't watch the trailer. But when I saw her walk in, I went, oh, no. And <laughs> fuck yeah. Leave. At the Get out of here time. while you still can. <laughs> Get out. I, I Get was out. like, no, they didn't just fucking put Kristen Wiig yeah. as like a fucking <laughs> opposite to Gal Gadot. Jesus, yeah. what are you trying to kill her? Kill both of them for different reasons. But her, then her I went, entrance. oh, fuck yes. Because she's fantastic. She can do anything. She can't do no wrong. She can do no wrong in my eyes. So, so uh, Gal Gadot, she, in this movie, she works at uh, the Smithsonian, and then uh, Barbara Minerva, played by Kristen Wiig, comes in. She can't wear heels. What a fucking loser. Uh, my, my first problem with the movie is that, to me, they, so they pass off Barbara as this, like, uber nerd who can't even control herself, and then she makes a wish on the stone and becomes super fucking hot. But I think that Kristen Wiig is cute as fuck in the beginning of this movie. I think she's serving yeah. some San Junipero realness. And I actually, I'm going to say, it, I think that she's better looking in the beginning of the movie than when she gets her whole little yeah. sexy ass transformation. Yeah, she looks adorable. But she's supposed to play this like idea of every girl's worst dream. She doesn't have any friends. She has no date prospects. She works yeah. in the back office with the dusty bone collections. Like she's never orgasming. You know that for <laughs> for certain. But it was your classic. You knew those glasses were coming off and a hot <laughs> babe was underneath. Yeah. It was just a matter of time. Right. I, I will never forget being in the movie theater watching the trailer for the princess diaries for the first time and when anne hathaway had her first makeover reveal the entire audience went damn yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, because, and i mean my dumb ass as a child also didn't know how movies worked i'm like wow so they just like found a girl and then like knew that they could make her so beautiful that's crazy i didn't know that they did the uh, i didn't know that they made the other way girls around ugly oh, anyway yeah. But uh, yeah. But I you know what I did like about introducing Kristen Wiig as like supposedly the ugly duckling is that it really showed the dynamic of female friendship in a good <laughs> way that, okay. you know, Gal never was like, Gal never saw her as what she, they didn't play the mean girl trope. They weren't like, you know, when they introduced them, I thought Gal was going to be mean girl. She was like, I have plans. I can't go out to lunch. And I was like, no, but then they became friends. And I thought it was a really cute, sweet friendship when they were getting along. Spoiler alert. Well, it, it's been said the beginning of this movie is shaped like a rom-com between the two of them. And frankly, I want that movie. Aww. I think that. Oh, this fuck yeah. That's what that we movie. all want. I watch, I masturbate to that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm I eating think, grapes. <laughs> I, there, um, I think a movie that does this really well is uh, Chronicle. I don't know if you guys have, have, you have love brought it up before. I, yeah, think I feel like you've brought it up before. Every time we <laughs> brought it up before. <laughs> we need a Chronicle I counter. Love that movie. I love it so much. Um, but like it's it from from that aspect where it's just like three dudes. They, it's a rom com essentially, and then one of them is slowly turning bad. Mm. Um, and then you see like the signs or whatever, and it's literally just from his his background or, or whatever. But it's just from his perspective. The whole movie is from his perspective. Um, he's the most fleshed out person. Mm. And if you if you do that with this movie, there you go, boom, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's yeah. great. <laughs> it's because you don't know anything about Kristen Wiig's background. Nothing. Right. You don't know where her family's right. from. You don't know where she's from. No, it's she just that walk she's on not in heels. hot. She's a fucking loser. That's and all you she need can't to walk know. Walk in heels. Yeah. And she's too smart for the boys to like her. Yeah. And uh, the her her only wish is to be hot. Right. And that is worth destroying the entire fucking world <laughs> for. Yeah. And I didn't know, Zach, you called her Cheetah? She begins as just, oh. she wishes to be like Gal Gadot in every way. And so she becomes super strong yeah. and super hot. And, and everyone's like, oh, fuck. And there's so much catcalling in this movie. I don't know if it was meant to be a joke <laughs> on the fact that she becomes Cheetah. Like, it's there cheetah. is so oh, yeah. much. It's got to be that. Un- oh, I was going to say, adding to your point of the catcalling thing, if you go back and rewatch it, you will notice they only have white men. 
being scummy in the background. Love there that. is no other type go, of guy Patty. that like <laughs> gives a second look or like says something nasty. And I started counting like in the very, very, very beginning at like the mall stuff. And if you notice all three of the mall rats were three white guys. And I was like, okay, I like this movie. Right. Good for that. <laughs> Good for, give it that. Um, they, but yeah, she then later, she she wishes that she no longer wants to be uh, like Gal Gadot. She wants to be an apex predator. So they turn her into a cat lady with CGI, frankly, worse than my favorite movie, Cats. Uh, it was so... <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. It was crazy looking. I think and I, they, they really did miss out on like a nice little opportunity of how she made the the first wish in the fir- in the first place where she was just like i wish i was strong like diana and not like where she's like oh i'm i'm physically strong or whatever but just like a strong willed and mm. and confident person or i wish i was mm. like this or whatever and it just like and then it made her it was just like oh i if, if the wish was like i wish i'm like i was like diana and then she just became sad and like insecure and lonely and, and, Even and more. literally <laughs> took on all of the qualities that she was feeling during the movie and then they have like this nice little look like you know Freaky rom-com Friday. moment like just yeah. lean in on the rom-com it would have been can i tell you nothing confused me kiss. more than when what you were just talking about, Rick, where you were like, she made the wishes to be like Diana for some reason. And this might lead us into talking about Steve slash Chris Pine's character coming back. But Hell for yeah. some reason, I thought I missed the part where Diana wishes for him to come back because she doesn't ever say it out loud. Uh-uh, I yeah. realized I went back and she says it in her head, but that's very confusing for a viewer. If right. you look down for a moment at your There's snacks, a lot. This, but this, this whole time. This movie loves to not explain things to you until two hours later. Yeah. Yes. This whole time I thought because Kristen Wiig had wished that she was Diana, that resurrected her big love. Or oh, I thought the second option was that when they were at dinner getting drunk like wine girl night and they first spill their beans about like their shit and she's like oh i used to have a lover like he died though like first of all okay um that would have gone yeah. down a lot darker in real life but uh right. i thought kristen wig was just being a homie and wished another wish that her new bff's ex-lover was back never once did i fucking understand that diana had wished that and i the whole time was waiting for Diana to say something like, thank you. Or, you know, for Kristen Wiig to be like, aren't you fucking glad I brought back your dick, your golden dick. Right. And right. that never happened. It, did, it was shaped like a dick. That's the other thing. The crystals. That's the other thing is it sure was. I mean, look at this. You got a wish on a penis. Look at this big boy. Uh, I never understood. Upon a dick. Upon a dick. <laughs> there it is. So, so, okay. Diana, in her head, wishes that her lover, who she knew for approximately four days in the 1940s and hasn't gotten over since. No! This, like, I'm just gonna, before we get into it, there's been a lot of good people that she could have gotten with between now and then. Whatever. So she wishes for him to come back, but he doesn't... Chris Pine, who is wonderful, doesn't come mm. back... He comes back in the body of some other dude in this like intense being John Malkovich sunken place bullshit. <laughs> it's so confusing and weird. Right. Now here's where I need to step in. I need to step in and I need to take a stand for my boy Chrissy P because yeah. I think that he is genuinely wonderful in this movie. Does he contribute much of anything to the plot? No, not really. No. Could you take out almost every single scene of his and the movie is exactly the yes. same? Absolutely. Yeah. But I think yeah. that he is awesome in this and having the time he, of his life discovering the wonders of the 80s. Give me more. So oh, I, yeah. I think that he was like, and this is... Gal Gadot was a, a terrible actress. And yeah, okay, I'm glad you said it. I couldn't, so I wasn't she, allowed she's, to say she's it. She's not, 
She's not She's great, very bad. But he's an actor. He's an actor. So Act- like he's, he's a he's thespian. Taking the material and he's just like, yeah, I'll, I'll get into it. I can be an 80s boy. You know, let's let's do it. And it's like, I'm also handsome. You you want me to want to fuck a plane this entire movie? Oh, I got you. <laughs> right. My yeah, character's I'm backstory only sticks his dick in airplane right. exhaust pipe. <laughs> right. That's I'm sorry. Plane. You come back from the dead, which you can't explain and you're seeing your lover for the first time and the first thing you want to do is go outside and look at airplanes yeah fuck <laughs> off you fell in love with a little boy gal Gadot. <laughs> right that's He's what a it child. is a little oh, man boy with the body of a man and the lips yeah. of adonis to okay <sighs> yeah god god damn. that was to good, be fair yeah like you were saying before, where, where the cast was just stacked, like mm-hmm. because she needed such a crazy supporting cast, mm-hmm. everybody was just like, I don't give a fuck what's on the page. <laughs> I am this person now. Pedro Cas- Pascal Let's talk lost about his him. fucking mind. Let's talk lost about him. Lost his goddamn, he, was, Gave he went from the Mandalorian, Ugh. a stoic god, to this. <laughs> he, excuse me, Narco? Are you kidding Narcos? me? I'm so sorry. I skipped over Narcos. The good, king good of god. drugs oh and my busting god. doors down? This is the reason to watch this movie. This is where the sales pitch begins and ends. If you want to see a grown man having the time of his <laughs> fucking life, yeah. watch Pedro Pascal <laughs> chewing the scenery every second that he graces that screen. He oh. is every time. out of his mind going I every imagine time. Like that a that's just percent. how Donald Trump felt and how donald yeah. trump got to office like yeah there's no it, way other than some felt, magical stone it felt like the it, it, with scenes with him it felt like the wishing stone was like an allegory for cocaine cocaine and <laughs> it, yeah, yeah, it was a hundred percent you're cocaine so right he got, oh my he got God. sweatier his nose started bleeding whenever he used it he looked he, more sick Cracked a cocaine. blood vessel in his and, eyes. And cracked a, yeah, cracked a blood vessel in his eye. Who's going to say it? I don't think I can. Someone else has to say the fact that his child was straight up Asian and he was, he was, he was very not. He was an Asian young boy. <laughs> super confusing. Confused I me because I thought there was an notes. adoption story in there. It made me feel a little bit not more for him. I thought maybe he was a, a, a different kind of dad. But we just glossed over that casting. Yeah. Also, like... I and, and I and I saw that they sh- yeah the kid the casting is t- fucking <laughs> insane. I saw that they were try they could have gone for like the liar liar angle where it's just like the kid um uh wish that his dad wouldn't lie or his, his the kid wish that his dad was there all of the time and they could have gone they down that it. road and then like they they probably did and then somebody was just like this is liar liar and they're like fuck yeah. <laughs> and, like, this movie was already made another I, time i got confused when he touched his father's leg and said i want your greatness and then i went oh and jared went what and i go so now the little kid has the powers and he was like no, no and i was like he already made his mean? one wish that was not clear in the instruction manual that you got one wish yeah that's very fair which is why like Pedro later. Pascal found the loophole in the system of witchery where he decided to become the stone witch. Can we talk about a plot twist for just a second? When he said, what's your one wish? I'm the stone. What's your wish? And he said, bitch, I want to be the stone. Oh, did not see that man. coming. Aladdin, yeah. you fucked up. Aladdin, yeah. sauced. I mean, you could have became the genie. Minus the fact that you would have been stuck in a tiny bottle. You would have been stuck. That's how they got Jafar. That's how they got Jafar. Is that? um, I can't remember. Yeah, made him become a genie. Oh, was that the whole plot of Aladdin? Twenty-seven. Was that that actually the whole plot of Aladdin? I don't remember it. Yeah, (laughs) that's pretty much Aladdin. (laughs) But (laughs) he, Pedro Pascal, said, "I want to become the Wishing Stone," and that is when I knew this was a good movie. Right. That's that's when I thought it would like he would become an actual stone, stone? and then he got rid of Pedro <laughs> Yo, as a whole. Wait, hold on, a crack stone. A crack, crack, crack. He came, became like a crack. He crack. became the fucking coke stone. It's all coming together. Now I it's now 80s. I understand why they made this in the eighties. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. We, it's, we've it's alluded cocaine. to how confusing the rules are, but so he becomes the stone, so he can grant people's wishes. But then anytime yeah. someone grants a wish, he takes whatever he wants from them. Yeah, that didn't make any sense either. 
um because he like got to make the rules after and that never like was established or anything Mm -mm. like that um audiences don't like that yeah it wasn't i would much rather it be random and he didn't like get to decide because yeah i'm I'm not kidding two hours into the movie i checked the time because i got to watch this at home on my hbo max instead of the theaters (laughs) that (laughs) that is how far into the movie it takes for him to explain how it works (laughs) <laughs> there are, he's on a well, plane with Kristen Wiig. He, yeah. Here's where I thought it was fucked up is because in the very, very beginning when you discover the citrine and the guy says, I wish I had a coffee and then a coffee comes, there are no consequences for that for boy that. No. asking for a coffee. The Gal Gadot's dead lover boy comes back. No consequences. Fucking Kristen Wiig. Oh, it took her, it took her powers away. That was the consequence. I didn't get that either. I thought it was just. I didn't get that either. So because that's not okay. So that is not your fault. Fault. I thought Kristen Wiig's character was taking her powers from her. Yes, from her wish. Two. Yeah, and like, and like, it could have been a whole thing where it's just like your friend is now dying because Because you wish to take her powers away. Body snatching. Right, and you want you wanted to body snatch, but that wasn't the case. She was losing her powers because she wished that this dude was still around. Which, if you never picked that up, imagine how confused things were for me for a while. (laughs) Yes. For, I, and, and it should have been for everybody. How did they not, how did nobody like say, hey, this is actually, these two wires are going to be crossed. Speaking of wires. Oh. In the end of the movie. She is underwater with Cheetah, and then uh-huh. a wire gets cut, and then she's uh-huh. like, I'm so sorry, I have to do this. And then uh-huh. she shocks the water, shocking uh-huh. the Cheetah, and uh-huh. not herself. Doesn't yeah. make any sense. Why no, the, no, they, Garrett, they have the same wear- power set. No, she was What's wearing it? metal, that's why. Metal protects from oh, electrocution. <laughs> the, the metal, yeah, the metal helps her not get electrocuted. I, I forgot, I'm so sorry. Uh, I, I, I failed didn't chemistry. even know that that, I, I thought she drowned her. I no. didn't know she electrocuted her. She electrocuted I thought everybody. she straight up fucking held her underwater and for some reason Gal Gadot could breathe underwater like a fish and she couldn't. Still doesn't make sense. I know, but my brain accepted that. Wouldn't surprise me with how many powers she has. Give her breathing yeah. underwater too. Let her be Aquaman. Right. Well, I think I think that's where they they that w- what they wanted to get at or hint at with her mm-hmm. lassoing lightning, where she was just like, "Oh, I'm not being affected by the lightning, so electricity doesn't have an effect oh, on me. Oh God, so I'm going that... to shock the water." Fuck. And so oh, you're so right. Oh. oh, I'm so mad. But that doesn't make any sense. See, she we're can... all still connecting pieces, and that's <laughs> fucked up. If she is a classic comic book, you don't have any questions about Batman. A- about None. Batman at all. At all. Or Superman. Even and why Superman. didn't they just put Catwoman in this? Why do you have to make Cheetah? <laughs> right. Well, Where's well, the crossover? Different different I don't know. <laughs> Isn't it all the same DC? It is DC. Yeah. I guess. yeah. Like, okay, well, you like, can, you're telling we're... me you're gonna have a Catwoman and a Cheetah? Fuck off! What is yeah, your fucking fair. brain just felines? You're like, no, oh, that's fair. give me another it's, it's fucking. Like, it's, it's men or dogs. Black or Panther, also a cat. Well, that's oh. Marvel. But God damn yes. it! I thought I was <laughs> on to <laughs> something. You were on a roll, though. <laughs> you were making points. Damn, I was making points. You're, you're making points. <sighs> yeah, but this is—it's too many dots to connect. Uh, I, I need. I think the time has come for the scene that uh, made me. There are two scenes that made me scream in this movie. Yes. One with Love unfettered this. glee. One with absolute pure, just deep rage. Uh, so they have to steal an airplane in this movie because mm. Steve doesn't have a passport. But of course he has a fucking passport because he's in someone else's body. He's another guy. He's a they human being. Check, check, his check, his, check his drawers. But okay, so they they just go on to a tarmac and they get on an airplane and they don't have a plan. plan. They don't have a fucking plan. But then Diana, she starts doing this little, little force field with her hand and she goes, I've always wondered how my... Did she say my dad? Which are their dads in this? Yeah, I don't know. her I think dad. Her dad. Her dad is. Which, I like, it was all when did she have a dad? No one explains Exa- that. I don't that know. That was in the first movie. This movie is so frustratingly reliant on you remembering these tiny details from a movie that came out five years ago. Ugh. But yes. 
So she starts doing this force field and she's like, I, I made a coffee cup invisible once. And then she makes a whole fucking airplane go invisible. Mm -hmm. And this is not set up in the beginning. This is not established as something like mm -hmm. if you set that up in the, in the, in the opening of the movie, I would be cheering. I would be stoked. Mm -hmm. But instead, yeah. That it just comes out of They could have made her nowhere. horse disappear, the one she popped her cherry on. She could have right. played That's with that. That's what that whole scene should have been about. Yes. That whole scene should have been about her, this, like the, 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 the gold winged woman. It should have yes. been about should've her been because involved. we had yeah. no, she, I mean, she no, came in mid, that. midway through. Still have no idea what she Made was. up. <laughs> yeah. Made up, out of nowhere. I was just like, well, okay, that was cool. A lie. So I guess the armor <laughs> is just there. Whatever. Which then Gal Gadot gets beat up and just drop. She puts on the armor to just drop the armor. To just drop <laughs> it. To just drop the wings. They want a new Halloween costume. That's what that yeah, was. Yeah. Okay. Fair. That was they pure wanted marketing. They want to sell more stuff. Yeah. They, I hate when capitalism gets in our fucking way. Jesus Christ. I mean, what did you expect from a studio fucking feature released in the middle of a pandemic? You're not, you're not wrong. But like, okay, so that there's that thing. And then... If the um if the beginning was about her figuring out how to make things invisible, like like Kelsey was saying, like she just dropped, and the, the horse turned invisible, or something, you know, or some shit about Zeus or blah blah blah, and, yeah. and then like, because that makes her different, right? From like that, that's like what makes her special. Or can and all Mascarians, Amazonians do that? <laughs> no, she is she's the princess, so she like has she's half god like that's like, like the whole remind thing remind us give us a fucking break give us something you you have to remember the majority of people genuinely watching this are not those nerdy dude comic book fans in fact they like protested this movie right it's like women yeah. who've never heard of the comic before <laughs> and it's also like dc stuff is so like their power sets are so fucking crazy. They're so like Superman is literally Jesus Everest Christ, the strongest. and that's the whole that's the whole thing. He is Jesus Christ, and there's nothing that you can do to stop him. His whole like his whole enemy is the fact that he is um, powerful beyond means, measure beyond measure. Um, and so he has to fight with the fact that he's not above anybody else. Batman, same thing, right? He's just yeah. have a, a, a strong ass orphan. <laughs> yeah. Batman, he's just a tra tra trauma makes you uh, makes you very uh, powerful and smart, it's a metaphor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a metaphor for trauma and how to yeah. use it. Yeah, Wonder Woman. But like, it she's is so confusing. It's so confusing. It's just like okay, so well, what if we just because Batman is just okay. So what if there's somebody with all the power and then no power? <laughs> there you go you got superman and batman but she cool. can leak the truth out of her husband who comes yeah. home too late at night wonder woman is just female female superman what if we made yeah. a woman strong as well yeah they're I the same think, colors and stuff too right it, same it, color scheme yeah i think you can make a good point and it, it's a disservice to her character because she had literally by the end of this movie she's flying <laughs> she can yeah. fly now and it's yeah. like it's, right. there's so much happening that i just don't I don't care for her. I don't believe in her because like this, nothing is going to happen to her. She has a bullet graze her strapless uh, body armor at one point. And I'm like, mm. okay, yeah. she'll be fine. That te <laughs> she'll be fine. Declaté. There are, Can you there imagine are no her saying that word? Declaté. Declaté. Mm. But I will say that scene where they are flying the invisible jet through fireworks gave me brand new expectations for a marriage proposal okay are you listening jared if you're not flying me through fireworks in a private jet i don't want it and my first question was i looked to jared and i go can you get that close to fireworks and then it really had me thinking like what is a firework it's powder <laughs> sure but did you see joe biden's like a uh, confirmation whatever night where they literally had like joe biden in the air and i was freaking out. i was like you guys they got the, the fireworks they joe biden and someone goes those are drones <laughs> and I said, yeah. Yeah. okay fucking smarty pants let a kid still believe so I got a thing for fireworks is what I'm saying after seeing that shot. Cause oof, baby, those, those cinematography moments of Chris Pine's baby blues. It was good. Phenomenal. I love Chris Pine. Okay. My biggest, my biggest scream number two, this, and this scene actually, I think this, there was one moment in this movie where I wish I could have been in a theater. I wish I could have been with you guys. I wish we could have been cheering together because we get this, this, uh, little, 
<laughs> we get this trip to the Middle East for a little dabble of racism. How fun. You get the dad Here from Rami. Go. Love that, that dude's working. Fucking you want to talk about racism first? Or you want to talk about the moment that I love? No, no, no. Talk about the moments that you love. I got, I got fucking seven we're, in the chamber ready. right now for this. We're ready. Dad, with, for this, Just for this trip that. to Pakistan. Oh, oh. I want to well, go. We get this gloriously zany chase sequence where Gal Gadot, in addition to being able to fly and be a Spider-Man with a lasso, she can run as fast as trucks uh, down a highway <laughs> there. And then at the end of this convoy, there are these little kids playing soccer, <laughs> playing soccer oh. on the highway during a high speed chase. What are you doing, kids? Get out of it. First of all, you can hear the explosions down the road. Yeah. You can see yeah. you, you can see these trucks barreling towards you. It's in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. But so Steve. It's goes, it's in the hey. desert. The desert is famously flat. So <laughs> there you go. Great place to play soccer. Right. Right. You can see probably a mile away. Yeah, forever. Literally a mile away. So Diana spots these kids that they're about to run over with their car, just wreck them. And Steve goes, Diana, as if they fucking are on the same page and they've done this before. And he's like, oh, you know what I'm about to do. He fires a missile. She lassos a missile and rides it and then swoops down like Spider-Man, grabs the children. But this is the first moment where she starts. So that's my scream. Number one, she wrote a missile. But then this yeah. is the first moment where she starts losing her powers, her grip slips, and she tumbles from two stories into the air onto the concrete, child first, just rolling over those <laughs> little kids' faces. And I will say for a movie that had flawless VFX and CGI, <laughs> this was the first time you see two sacks of flour dressed as children as props oh my God. hit the ground. I was like, who let that slide through that you literally see dummies? You see the dummies as children as she that took choice. away from the moment for me. It was, I think, honestly, 2020's truest laugh out loud movie moment. Like it is so I, I actually I have tweeted this that you can you can find it online if you oh. watch nothing else from this movie other than Pedro Pascal in every single scene uh, and Steve Steve Rogers, Steve Trevor being just so charming. Uh, watch Gal Gadot break her fall with a child's face <laughs> <laughs> with a child's face. That's yes. got to be like a meme, like a so, parenting <laughs> seamless segue into um, into the racism of this. And <laughs> There's, why a this is, There's a lot of racism. There's a lot. Okay. Gal Gadot was a part of the IDF, right? That is the Israeli right. Defense Force. Uh -huh. um, she has openly been openly. like, nah, <laughs> they gotta go. They gotta go, blah, blah, blah. We gotta kill them. So on and so forth, oh. right? So her breaking her fall with small brown oh, God, children right. makes oh, no. total sense to me oh, no. makes also, total sense to me of course she she probably asked them to put that in <laughs> she was just like what if, what, what if my one note patty i was looking at this scene and i thought can i hurt the children still <laughs> can i hurt the, is it okay if i hurt the children is it okay so that i can subliminally say that Wonder Woman will come for you. If, and what if, if and what if I recklessly toss a missile uh, while I do it as well? <laughs> right, right. Hopefully it hits the wall, right? Yes, that that they've been building so that Ugh. we can, you know, storm through. Is that okay? Oh and the, I don't know if you caught this, but that when the universe is all making their one wishes, yes. they only went for like the what I assume to be uh, Al Qaeda esque, uh, supposed to be, <laughs> but could very easily be mistaken for literally any other like Middle Eastern countries uh, yes. race yeah. uh, to to wish for um, nuclear destruction yes. um yep. upon death to my enemies which could be you know you yep. would just think there's like a hundred people that that has to go through that's, before someone's like this won't come back to us right that's most people in north carolina like we could have just <laughs> said we could have ah. just said that like we could have just chose that but no oh it's okay also 
he he the 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 guy the guy that was saying that he owned all of the oil, right? Yes. Oh or yeah. Whatever. The dad In from Egypt, have, you Cairo. Been to the, have you been to the UAE? Have you been to United Arab Emirates? Like, like it's phenomenal. It's beautiful. It looks like everything is the fucking future. It's supposed to be Egypt, Egyptian guy, which is way different in americans eyes right over right. there they it's got like pyramids it's, it's so dusty over there yeah. no, no 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 they couldn't have done any the, differentiating right it's one of, like if, if you go to saudi Arabia, it's one of the richest places like what are you doing yeah. Yeah. when it takes place in the about? 80s and they they took with it the stereotypes of the 80s of how we depict people in the middle east and it was yeah. super fucked they up did tr- they did take quite a few hits at the soviet union which i was like Okay, I see you trying, but you won't even say it's Russia. Yeah. You're caught. You have to, you come on. Don't come on. Either go, either drag them or, or get out. My other favorite piece of questionable race moments from this movie, they have <laughs> yeah. uh, Ravi Patel from Master and Nun and the wonderful documentary Meet the Patels. He's an Indian man, an Indian actor, and he plays a Mayan in the movie. A, Ma- a Mexican. <laughs> so, so weird. Crazy. <laughs> I, so and I and sat I, there looking at it going, are they trying to say something with this? Like, yeah. no, no, maybe there's more Middle Eastern influence or or Indian influence or something. And no, they the, that's just bad casting. Once again, it seems like they have trouble with casting anyone that's not white or Gal Gadot in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about mostly the first half of the movie here, which I feel like uh, is all you need to know about what we thought of this movie because the second half like there's a fight in the white house there's this climax where she fights a kitty cat that and he's has a uh, a satellite touching everybody i just found myself getting increasingly checked out uh as it went on i didn't even know that that was a part of i don't even know what the fuck was happening i just knew that more destruction and mayhem was coming and i thought he's already hit Eight billion people in the in the the world in this movie. Now he's going to outer space. That's what I thought was happening. Yeah, yeah. to be it frank, it was like a, a, a fast and furious type. We're going to space. We have nowhere else to go. I I'm you so glad you said that the- because that was also what I was thinking of when they were in Egypt, which is not the Middle East, but yeah. since we're just all grouping it all into one, uh, when they were in Egypt, when they were doing the car chase, I was like, this is making Zach probably so happy. <laughs> that was the best scene. Of course it was. I she love flips a truck and flies over it. Yeah. Fights in a car. Always, always, always a goodie. Love yeah. that. Uh, but one little small detail. I am stunned for a movie that had this much cat fighting with uh, Wonder Woman fighting someone named the Cheetah that there was not one little 80s sidekick moment where someone went cat fight. Row. <laughs> they were like, we're better than that. Yeah. <laughs> But well, the else. movie's not working. You want to fix it. And luckily, we have our own resident fixer, professional screenwriter extraordinaire, Garrick Bernard. This is Garrick's One Fix. Wait, let me hype you up a little bit more. Soon to be actor who will probably <laughs> launch himself into fame so hard that we will yeah, get to Garrick's make fun of ripped. one of his shows oh, soon enough Please on God. this show. Not that Please. he would ever, because he is a writer extraordinaire. <laughs> in there for one of the best showrunners in the business Garrick Bernard hey 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 thanks thanks <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> hey, hey, hey 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 it's it's your boy Garrick in the oh, morning no. <laughs> and, and enjoy this up. piece of Garrick now that. while we still have him because he's about to get super oh, ripped like no, Chris no, Pratt he's about to blast off in his face for the, for the rest of my life just like <laughs> Fast and Furious 3 nowhere yeah. to go but up and nowhere to go but anyway, like, so I think that there was like the way that it started, right? It, and okay, so like just going back with the first movie, there was this whole like chic or like sheen or like layer of World War One movies, right? Uh-huh. Where it's just like she's coming out of the trenches. It looks fucking awesome. All of these like all these movies like Fury and um, Band of Brothers and um, and um, what, what's, Saving, what's, Private, Saving Ryan. Private Ryan. <laughs> all of those movies. It was like it was channeling that and i was like oh this is this is dope and then it, it, it broke up way and and that's why the third act of everything else was just like so shocking because it's just like okay so now we're in the modern era where everything is super cgi and this kind of is not for me 
But right. hated that. In this one, it started off being like a whole like Stranger Things esque, mm-hmm. like like play on all of the eighties tropes of that time. Mm-hmm. And it wanted and, to be like but the it was Superman like kind of movies, one fit in Christopher Reeves. What's up? It wanted to be yeah, like the Christopher Chris, yeah, Reeves superhero movies. Superman. Superhero movie. Yeah, with like the old old Superman stuff where it's just like one but it was like one foot in, one foot out because they were kind of like doing like the green screen stuff, but then also not, you know, like they were also mm-hmm. like trying to modernize it. And it's just like, okay, cool, but that's not you either have to go all in like they mm-hmm. did in the first film with the World War mm-hmm. One um style movies, mm-hmm. or or not. And then they, they completely dropped and they went with the other side of just like being like, okay, no, let's just make a fucking superhero movie and not do like an old Christopher Reeves style uh, Superman movie. And You're if they so did right. the old style stuff, then you can say, oh, we're paying homage. We're, this is this is us, you know, looking back at our roots and all of that stuff and then yeah. just making a, an old style superhero movie, which would have been cool in my eyes. You know what? You're so right that that choice informed so much that like was unnecessary. Like I could never figure out why Pedro Pascal's character had to be like a TV personality. Right. And then I was like, oh, I guess this is like the 80s equivalent of like a Tony Robbins toxic masculinity, right. like guy who needs more power. Like he didn't even like it would have been funnier if he sold like um the mop. Or like the slap <laughs> chop or something and wanted more power. But they, yeah. they were trying so hard to lean into like the 80s theme that they it, they made so many unnecessary fucking right. choices. And like right. the fact that the only comedy in the whole movie came at the expense of the theme that they like chose was lazy. Right. Lazy. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like it's it's. All that it was is it, it, it was the jokes. That's the only thing that mm-hmm. they really kept in the '80s, rather than the entire look of the film or like the wardrobe. Yeah, sure. the style. But if they made the entire style, all of that shit, just very, very '80s, like Stranger Things does, where it's just like, oh no, we're just you're just here, you're transported now. This is you know an yeah. old. Um, uh, yeah, an it didn't old... feel like an '80s movie the way you the, the, right. that one felt like a and World War One. Stranger movie. Things did it. Stranger, no Stranger one would be able. To to top it like yeah. stop it they knew this was going to take four more years to make didn't they think that it was going to be another two seasons of the stranger things fucking killing the theme of the 80s stop yeah. trying to drag us back to the arrow of the the cassette tape right just because you're white boy nostalgic i can't take any more 80s thank god kylie <laughs> jenner brought back the choker for the 90s at least we're living <laughs> a little bit in the 90s right now with our fashion i don't need to go back unless you're giving me woodstock or like fucking quest love Woodstock adjacent, I will take it. Stop it. Stop yeah. trying to touch the 80s. We're done. Fair, fair. The only good thing that came out of that was Coke, and it wasn't even that good of Coke, okay? <laughs> I would know. I'm from Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Give me Wonder Woman 1996. I want her doing her dial up AOL. I want her listening to yeah, Nirvana yeah. and slamming her door yeah. and saying, Don't come in here, Dad. That's yeah, the movie that's I want to see. That's why Pen15 is fucking is there. the best. The way that Thor Ragnarok and all of mm. like the, the Guardians of the Galaxy movies are Crushed. in the future, but feel like 80s movies, uh-huh. is what they were going for, yeah. obviously. This was in the 80s, but felt like the five years ago. <laughs> it felt, it like, felt like two hours and 33 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. That is yes, the exactly. truth. What what about the end? Do you want to Oh, I know what you're gonna say. Say it. I know what you're gonna say. Let the lady do the love wrap up. Okay. Well, first of all, who cares? Pedro Pascal goes back to his little boy. That's like really sweet, cute. Like he's no gonna just like go break the chain, like I said in the beginning. Gonna break the bad dad chain. Uh bad Gal Gadot chain. is still in the eighties and she's watching the snowfall. Uh, at like a Christmas market, she is nailed by a snowball by these two little kids. <laughs> and instead of lashing out like the Karen she could be, she says, that's okay. And as she turns to walk away, the man whose body her lover had body snatched to come back to life walks up next to her to also look at the snow and is like, ha, look at the snow. And she's like, what are the chances? The guy Steve body snatched with his back (laughs) to his normal self. And guess what? The thump, the thump. 
he's hot and I'm gonna <laughs> fall in love with him with my goo goo eyes and he says like oh I'm sorry ma'am <laughs> didn't mean to be talking to myself well you're pretty I like your outfit thank you some <laughs> of my friends make fun of me no it's very cool and it's like oh my god you're gonna make her fall in love with the fucking guy that Steve inhabited talk about talk about Stockholm Syndrome yeah she cannot get over this guy also he's not <laughs> hot he looks bad. He's got a fucking dumb chin. I hate it. Go off. It's, <laughs> it's the worst. He's I got, love he's it. Garrick chimes in with the also. <laughs> <laughs> he looks bad. Look, Look, Garrick has very Look high standards for who can get with Gal Gadot, and no one is yeah. good enough. <gasps> yeah, and her it's husband's not good enough. That- apparently, though. This is right up her alley. You know, maybe there they tried to give her another people fine good dude, enough for Gal Gadot. Like, Chris Pine oh my God. and Garrick Bernard. And Garrick. That's end the list. Michael B. Jordan. Not even me. <laughs> not even me. I cannot see myself wow. with Gal Gadot. I am not tall Yet. enough. I am not strong oh enough. My God. So <laughs> I'm not. Well, if you it. had a wishing stone, if I had a wishing stone, I would wish I, I was could as get you all. You wouldn't wish right, you, were, you guys want You wouldn't trivia? wish to be with her. You would wish to be as strong as her. Yeah, because I want to be the cheetah at the end of the day. <laughs> You mean the apex predator? The apex predator, I apologize. <laughs> yeah, I would. That's crazy because I would wish to be a cat person CGI. I want to be in real life. I want to look CGI cat. That would be my wishing stone wish. I, and I, wanna... I would be like Pedro Pascal to become the crack rock. Yes. <laughs> we yeah. all hit our true final forms. Me as cocaine, Rick as Gal Gadot's equal, and Zach as a CGI'd cat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's our, our truest forms. Uh, look forward to that fan art. You guys want some trivia? Oh. Yeah! Please. Okay, so Kristen Wiig was Patty Jenkins' first choice for the role of of Cheetah. However, the role was originally offered to which actress? I'm I'm making this like Um, a game now. Yeah. That's fun. Oh, I'm going to go with Rebel Wilson. (laughs) (laughs) I would watch the fuck out of that. Close. Um, it may be Anne Hathaway. (laughs) Oh, no! (laughs) Maybe Anne Hathaway. Wow, and this is like the, yeah. bo- two of her roles combined, right? It's it's yeah. Princess right. Diaries, yeah. like nerd to hot, and, Cat and then Woman. And, Cat and Catwoman. Woman. I love that. So uh, Sarah Paulson was reportedly interested in the role and <gasps> tried to get it, but love that choice, right? But yeah. the role was originally offered to Emma Stone, who declined. Oh, uh, I hate when you said okay. Sarah Paulson, my jaw dropped. Yeah. She would have. Crushed that. She would have killed it. I said Kristen Wiig can do no wrong. The only way she can do wrong is by taking that role from Sarah Paulson. Yeah. This is the best trivia I'll ever give you. So the Pedro Pascal's character, he was based on Gordon Gecko, inspired by Lex Luthor, but Pedro Pascal based oh. his performance on none other than Nick Cage. And when I read that. It made everything in the universe click. What? Pedro. Pedro, Thank what you, are you Pedro. doing, man? What do you mean, what are you Pedro. doing? Did you, we watched Nick the movie. We agreed Cage? that he was killing the game. There's only one In man you can what, get that inspiration though? from. Of being unhinged. Yeah. I thought you were going to say Pedro based his character off of Leonardo DiCaprio and Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, you know what? Wow. We have a lot to talk about offline. Uh, yeah, we're going to be doing a, a, a full-on conversation about Nick Cage. I'm going to make you guys watch some Nick Cage yeah. movies. Uh, thank you so much for, for listening. This has been Guilty Pleasures. Uh, let us know what you thought of the movie below. Uh, and also, please let us know what movie you would like to see hear us do next. Don't forget to subscribe, rate us, do all the things. Garrick, where can they find you? Garrick was taken on Twitter and Garrick <laughs> Bernard on Instagram. Making it hard for people. Kelsey, where can they find you? Yeah, sorry about that. Kelsey Dara on all the things. Buy my book, Don't Fucking Panic, and go visit justiceforcerad.com. That is today's episode. Uh, we forgot to say if this was a guilty pleasure. Garrick and I think it's guilty. Kelsey thinks it's a guilty pleasure. Next week, we will be watching Pitch Perfect with Lore DIY. But what's the month ahead? After that, we've got Crossroads, which is Kelsey's movie, followed by Speed Racer with Shane Madej and the Lizzie McGuire movie with Elle Mills. Lots of great episodes ahead. This has been Guilty Pleasures. Till next time, stay guilty. <laughs>